I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on sequences and series. Here is an assignment for you. You need to find general term of few sequences given in this particular example. The question here is find the general term for the following sequences. We have five of them here for you. You need to write general term for all these sequences. You can pause the video, answer it now. You can also look into my website, globalmathinstitute.com for new videos and contact me on the given address in case you want to learn from me. Now these are questions which are seen in test papers. I thought we can discuss some strategies to solve them so that you know different ways of solving similar examples, right? So we'll explore strategies. I hope these will help you to understand how to solve similar questions. So let's begin with the very first one, which is uh, 4, 12, 24, 40. Seems to be simple, but let us uh, see how can we solve such a sequence and find the general term for it, right? So we are given a sequence. The numbers are 4, 12, 24, 40, and so on. The first thought which comes to our mind is to find the difference, right? So what we can do is we can find what is the first difference, what is the second difference, what is the third difference, right? So let's find the first difference. What do you notice? Well, 12 minus 4 is 8. 24 minus 12 is uh, 12. And 40 minus 24 is 16. We do see a pattern, right? We see it's kind of like going up by 4 each time, right? So next difference, if we take the next difference, then what do we get? Well, the second difference here is 4. Now, since the second difference is constant, we can say that this could be represented by a quadratic equation, right? So that means we are looking for a quadratic equation. Clear. So we know that it is of the form of, uh, if n is the number of terms, uh, it could be written as a quadratic equation. Now to get the quadratic equation, we have to do a lot of calculations. It is not that simple, right? Some of you, who know the techniques will know that the second difference is 4. So if the equation is for of the form of a n square plus b n plus c, in that case, we know that a is equal to 4 divided by 2. And they can use two points and find what b and c could be. Well, that is one method, right? So I'll call this as our method number one. Well, method one can be adopted by some students. However, it takes a lot of time and some students are not even at this stage uh, very comfortable with polynomials. And therefore, solving or writing a quadratic equation for this question could be slightly difficult. Now, here is the second strategy, which I'll say method two. In method two, we do understand that this is not a linear function, right? It is a non-linear function. So when it is a non-linear function, or oh, we can break the components into product of factors. So now find factors. Means write each number, take each number as a product of two numbers. You get my idea. So factors means we need to write this particular sequence, split it up, and write this as product of two numbers, right? 
how could you write them as product of two numbers? Well, this is a term number one, term number two, term number three, and term number four. Now, uh, 12 could be written as 4 times 3, right? This is 6 times 4, right? And that is 8 times 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. 8 times 5, okay. 6 times 4, mm -hmm. 4 times 3, 2 times 2. So, what you could do here is that you could write these terms as 2 times 2, right? Does it make sense? And how about this? 4 times 3, right? Do you get the idea, right? So we can write this as 4 times 3, which is 12. Uh, 6 times 4, which is 24. 8 times 5, which is 40, right? So what do you notice here? 4 can be written as 2 times 2. 12 can be written as 4 times 3. 24 can be written as 6 times 4 and 40 can be written as 8 times 5. So now I think you have a sequence which can easily be written in a general form, right? So these numbers are like 2, 4, 6, 8. They are even numbers, correct? And then we have these natural numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The sequence may continue. So this 2, 4, 6, this is 1 times 2, term number 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 2. You get the idea. Fourth term is 8, double, right? So double the position number. So now, looking into this, we can definitely write our general term, Tn, as what? Well, let me take one more statement here. So what I will do here is that this is 2 times 1, right? This is 2 times 2, double the term number, right? So therefore, I could write this as Tn equals to 2 times n times n plus 1. You get the idea. The first term is double the term number and the second term is one more than the term number. So we have written this in a general form which does represent the sequence given to us. Do you see that? In method two, calculations are not required. Once we figure out that the numbers can be written as factors and we can find the factors pattern Understanding that pattern helps us to provide the general term and therefore the solution for this will be that the general term Tn, nth term, can be written as 2n times n plus 1. Clear? So whenever we write like this, in all ways, we are assuming n to be set of natural numbers. Correct? It belongs to the set of natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And that is how you get your first solution. Is that clear to you? So do you appreciate that the standard method would have involved a lot of calculations and time? However, understanding how to write it as a factor helps you to find a quick solution. So that is the approach which we are going to follow in all the examples. Now let's look into the second one, which is uh, find the general term for the following sequence B is 7, 77, 777 and like this. Well, uh, it is very clear from here that we could write this pattern which is 7, 77, 777. So these are like what? Well, you can say it is 7 times 1, right? 7 times 11. Uh, 7 times 1, 1, 1, okay, and 7 times 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on, right? That is how the sequence is. Now here, we'll understand this strategy. How do we write 1, 11, 111, right? These terms in a general way. That is what we are going to learn now. Is that clear to you? See, 1 is what? 1 is like 10 minus 1 is 9. Do you see that? And if I divide this by 9, 
you get 1. Similarly, look here. 100 minus 1 is 99. Dividing 99 by 9 gives you 11. Similarly, 7 times 1000 minus 1 is 999. Dividing by 9 gives you 3 ones. So that becomes our strategy. Now this strategy helps us to find a quick solution. See, this is the term number one, right? So you could say that this is kind of like this. 10 to the power of 1, right? Minus 1 over 9, right? And here it is 7. You can bring 9 outside, no problems, and write this as 10 square minus 1. Similarly, we could write this as 7 over 9, 10 cubed minus 1. Well, this is our term number 1. This is term number 2, term number 3. And therefore, we do get a general solution, Tn. And you can write Tn as 7 over 9 into 10 to the power of n minus 1. Do you get the idea? So that is how, by splitting the terms into product of 2, helps to find solution for a general term. That is the focus of this particular video. So I hope you are understanding the technique. This is a very important example. Now let's take the next example, which is uh, 4919, 3979. Let's rewrite these terms, which are 4, 9, 19, 39, 79. Now, how do we split and look into these terms? Well, 79 could be written as like 80 minus 1. This could be written as 40 minus 1, correct? 20 minus 1. So we do see a pattern. You see that? Well, this is 5 minus 1 in that case. So we do get a pattern, which is like 5 minus 1, 10 minus 1. So something minus 1. Now, the question here is, how do we relate this something? 5, 10, let me write this clearly. This is 10, 20, 40, 60. Well, they're doubling up, right? 5 times 2, 10 times 2, 20 times 2, 40 times 2. That is how the sequence is developing. Now, when that is the case, how can we look into this in a different way? Well, powers of 2, I think, can work. You can see this is like 8 is 2 cube, right? So this is like 8 times 10 minus 1. This is like 4 times 10 minus 1. 2 times 10 minus 1. This is 1 times 10 minus 1. How about 5? Hmm. 5 is half of 10, right? So 5 can be written as half of 10 minus 1. So that is the kind of sequence. Okay, so what do you notice here? That these numbers, half, 1, 2, 4, and 8, they are powers of 2, right? Yes, they are. And therefore, I could write this as, let's begin from here, it's simpler. 8 is 2 cubed. 2 cubed times 10 minus 1. Okay, 4 is 2 square times 10 minus 1. And 2 is 2 to the power of 1 times 10 minus 1. And here we have uh, 1. 1 is 2 to the power of 0 times 10 minus 1. And half is 2 to the power of minus 1 times 10 minus 1. You get the idea. So the first term basically is 2 to the power of minus 1. We want to get minus 1 for the first term. That means I could write this as 2 to the power of n minus 2. So if I write n as 1, I get 1 minus 2 as minus 1, right? Times 10, correct? This is 10 and uh, minus 1. That should be the general term. What do you think about it? I think that's true. And so now we can write a general term tn, let's rewrite this 10 first, and then 2 to the power of n minus 2 
minus 1. Do you see the strategy? How we derived very easily the formula, which is actually very complicated. Perfect. So I hope you have got this one also. Let's move on and take the next one, which is find the general term for the following sequence. This time we have incorporated negative and positive numbers. Let me rewrite this. Uh, it is like minus 7, 9, minus 13, 21, minus 37. So alternately, we are having the negative term. So whenever you have alternate negative terms, it is always minus 1 to the power of something. Since the first term is negative, we can put this to the power of n. So that takes care of the signs, right? So that takes care of these signs, which are alternately positive and negative. So whenever you have alternate signs changing, we can take care of that. So we have taken care of the sign as such. Now let's look into the numbers. 7. Let me rewrite these numbers. 7, 9, 30, 21, 37. Now, do you see any pattern in these numbers? This is what we need to explore. Now, if you find the common difference, well, this gives me 2, and that is 4. And this is what? This is 4, right? So 21 minus 3 is 6. 8, right? 8, right? Okay. And that one is 16. Perfect. What you notice here is that the difference is going up by... 2. That means 2 to the power of n is involved in its solution. You get the idea. So that is how we derive at it. So it is doubling each time. The first difference is doubling and therefore it is an exponential function. You get the idea, right? So how do we relate with this? Hmm. So what do we notice here is that there is an exponential function and we want to relate this with 2. So why not write 7, 9, 13 as 2 plus 5? Yes, I think it works, right? And this is 4 plus 5. So you notice one more thing here. And that is 7 is equal to 2 plus 5. 9 is equal to 4 plus 5. 13 is equal to 8 plus 5. 21 is equal to 16 plus 5. And 37 is equal to? 32 plus 5. Now these numbers are actually powers of 2. So that is 2 to the power of 1 plus 5. This is 2 to the power of 2 plus 5. And that is 2 to the power of 3 plus 5. Then we have 2 to the power of 4 plus 5. And 2 to the power of 5 plus 5. So that is how the sequence is growing. So that gives you a clear idea. Now clearly, you can now find the general term. Since this is your first term, second term, third term, fourth and fifth term, and the powers are related with the term number, you can say, in general, the term could be 2 to the power of n plus 5, right? So that is without positive and negative sign. Of course, you need to multiply this with the sign which alternates. And therefore, I can now write my general term as minus 1 to the power of n which takes care of these signs, right? Plus and minus alternating. And then we have our solution, which is 2 to the power of n plus 5. Is that clear to you? So by analyzing and splitting the terms into two, we are always in a position to find an easy solution to a very difficult question, right? Now here is the last one for you. I'd like you to pause the video, answer it yourself. We have uh, to find a general term for the following sequence, which is 3, 10, 28, 72, 176. Well, let's rewrite this. So we are working on this time 3, 10, 28, 72, 176. Apply one of the strategies which we have learned so that you could actually solve this question. Okay, now how do we look at it? Well, can we write them as product of two numbers? So the strategies is like 
product of two numbers. That is one of our important strategy, product of two numbers. That is to say, we need to find factors. Do you see that? So factors help. Once you factor a number, it becomes simpler to analyze. So 3 is 3 times 1. 10 is 5 times 2. Okay. So 3 is 3 times 1. 5 times 2. Uh, 28 is 7 times 4. Uh, this is 9 times 8. And that, is it 11 times something? 16? Check. Well, 11 times 16 will be 16, 16, which gives us 170. Yes, it is. So do you see the pattern? So there is a pattern which we have immediately recognized by writing these numbers as product of two numbers or its factors. So these factors help us to find the solution. Now 1, 2, 3, okay. Now 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, these are like powers of 2 and these are odd numbers, right? So you can say 3 times 2 to the power of 0, 5 times 2 to the power of 1, correct? 5 times 2 to the power of 1, 7 times 2 to the power of 2, times right this is i'm writing as a product right okay let me write rewrite this so we are saying three times two to the power of zero five times let me write as a product two right seven times two to the power of two nine times two to the power of three eleven times two to the power of four and so on so in general the first terms are the odd numbers, right? So how do you get three, five, nine? So that is two n plus one is the odd number and two to the power of n minus one since we want zero, right? So that is how we could write it. So we could write this as the general term equals to odd number two n plus one times the power of n, but starts with zero. Since the first power is zero, right? We are writing n minus 1, right? So that is how you get this particular solution. So I hope now you understand. How do we get solution for each one of these questions using the method of writing them in simpler forms? Perfect. So these four questions have now been solved. And I hope you understand the strategy to find their solution. Correct? So splitting... The number and then looking at it helps you to find the solution. So now we have come to the end of this particular video. We have learned our strategies to write the solution in a fast way. So the strategy here, let me sum summarize, is to factor and understand the sequence. Perfect. i like you to now answer them independently. Take all these questions, all five of them. The solutions are given here for your reference. Try to find the sequence and gain confidence in solving such questions. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Feel free to write your comments. You can always post questions to the email given here and also check my website for the new videos. Thanks for your time and all the best.